Hi, everybody. Um, as you can tell by my accent, I'm not from around these parts. Um, I actually work in the London office of CBS, and I run the uh, Global Data Science Service, which is a platform service for self-service uh, data preparation and uh, self-service machine learning. So uh, today I'm going to take you through how we do that, how we provide that service across uh, you know, a large organization, and uh, some of the, some of the, the features or uh, pillars that we use to, to build, build out that uh, center of excellence. Okay, so a little bit about me. Um, I've been at UBS for uh, over 18 years now, which is quite a long time, uh, in one place. Um, and I uh, have done various different roles within the organization. Majority of them are kind of in the infrastructure space. Um, but fundamentally, um, uh, I've started using uh, data analytics particularly, uh, you know, many years ago. I mean, everybody in a in a large organization, particularly a financial one, is has got to be data savvy to some extent. And uh, about five years ago, we started a Tableau uh, uh, service, a Tableau Agile BI, as it's actually called, um, service. And that's when I started really getting involved in uh, data analytics. And uh, and it kind of it was an epiphany for me in terms of the way that we uh, can get real insight from data. Um, and how we can uh, make a big change in the, the way that the bank runs, the way that you know actually make a difference. Um, and uh, so much so that I then got involved in the, the community in London, the Tableau community in London, and I actually co-run the London user group for Tableau uh, and have done for the last three years. So a little bit about um, UBS. So um, does anyone know what UBS stands for? Shout out. Doesn't stand for anything. <laughs> um, uh, originally, the real idea was to call yeah Union Bank of Switzerland, but um, uh, actually, there's another bank in Switzerland called Union Bank Switzerland. Um, uh, so it doesn't stand for anything. Um, it's just a brand. Um, we are the uh, largest uh, wealth management, or one of the largest wealth management companies, and uh, depending on which uh, particular. <laughs> ratings you're reading at the time, but uh, we're up there in terms of wealth management. We also have a very large investment bank, um, um, and we are the biggest retail bank in Switzerland. Um, so uh, UBS has um, had a uh, somewhat, you know, checkered history over the, over over 150 years. It was officially uh, founded in uh, 1862. Um, so uh, to give some context, that's when the uh, the Battle of Shiloh was happening with Ulysses S. Grant, uh, won one of the first victories for the Union Army. So that's um, how long it goes. But there's some, some parts of the bank that go back even to 1852, which is actually during the, um, the Crimea War. Um, and um, if any of you are interested in kind of history of data, uh, Florence Nightingale, who was a, uh, obviously a nurse in the Crimea War, has done, a, did a, a, a great bit of work um, in terms of data anal analysis about how soldiers uh, recovered from wounds and particularly sickness in, in the hospitals there. Um, so I'd, I highly recommend looking that up in terms of uh, you know, how that data and the analytics she did made a big difference to uh, the way that uh, soldiers were then treated in subsequent wars. Uh, so what... What are, we, what are we trying to achieve at UBS? What, what, is a, what does a good data science project look like? You know, what, what do you need to make it, make it work? So we, we find you need mainly these three types of activities. Right? So you, you, you take your models and you've got your, your machine learning, um, and that's your you know, statistical analysis, your algorithms. But you can't just chuck data into it. You have to prepare it first, right? You have to get it into the shape where it can cope with it, and that's where you do a lot of data preparation. But fundamentally, and probably the most important thing, is you need the subject matter. You need to understand what it is, the que what question you are, you're asking, right? Now, the modeling done is traditionally done by data scientists. Um, the data preparation, you've then got an analyst or a data engineer, as it's sometimes called, someone who knows where the data is, how to manipulate it, put it in the right shape. Um, and then you've got your business analyst or uh, business sponsor, or you know, someone who knows what, what they're talking about in terms of the in terms of the the subject, the business, the the question you're trying to answer. Now, often what a lot of the 
areas of the bank that I deal with are looking for is something that basically fits all three, you know, and um, this is known as the unicorn because um, it doesn't really exist. Um, so if you find one person who is doing all three of these roles, then really you've got to ask yourself, what, what you're wasting your money, really, because if, you're, if you've got a data scientist that's doing all this data prep, um, as well as knows all the business inside and out, then you know, that's a really expensive resource. And if the chances are they're gonna be spending about 80% of their time doing data prep. So you know, you, you've got to ask yourself whether that's a good use of that resource. So actually you need to, you know, a combination of these, these roles. And um, sometimes you don't have all of the roles. Um, you know, I provide a platform that's across the entire group. And often we just have a business analyst who just wants to understand their data more. Um, we might have a business analyst and a data analyst that are working together, but they're, they, they need, you know, they, to then actually get some insight into it, then, you know, creating those models and getting that insight in is difficult. So this is where we, my service comes in to try and assist that, that gap um, and make, make, more of a, make more of a holistic service for, for them. So this is where we create citizen data scientists out of our employees. Um, so we basically take the people we have in the bank. Now, it, we expect all of our employees at UBS to be data literate. It's kind of minimum requirement, just like you would expect you know, employees to be able to use Excel or Word. Um, we expect them to be able to understand data. It's now a kind of key factor when we're employing people. So how do you create a citizen data scientist. Um, so this is a, a citizen data scientist effectively is somebody who um, uses algorithms or a data analysts to derive insight from the data. Right? So it, it doesn't have to be particularly complicated or sophisticated depending on what the question is they're answering, asking, right? So you take your employee, you give them some tools, and so in our case we have data EQ and we have a couple of other other tools as well that we run in my, in my service. Um, we then add a training and support and environment around that. So we provide a, um, a, a center of excellence, holistic service for them to really get to grips with the tools and what it is they're trying to do, as much help as possible, really. And that's what generates your citizen data scientist. But we don't work on our own. As I mentioned before, there's a Tableau Agile BI service which has been going for, for five years or so. Um, my service as well provides then the, the, the self-service data prep and machine learning capabilities. So we have two angles that come in through my service. One is from you know, those that want to prepare, prepare their data for data visualization or for report generation. And then we have those that are I don't know, hard, more hardcore data scientists who have a specific, you know, role that they're trying to fulfill. So, one of some of the use cases that we have at UBS are um, around anti-money laundering, um, wanting to find the next road trader. We've already had a couple, so we know about road traders. Um, uh, so yeah, we're if we can avoid getting any more fines from regulators um, and be proactive in searching that down. That is the key, key game. We have to uh, really show that we are um, serious about um, weeding this kind of activity out of the financial uh, services industry. But we also have um, additional services as well. So it doesn't just stop with the front end or the flashy stuff at the, you know, at the, uh, the user side. So we have a big data service which allows which is particularly for data EQ, is, uh, has a nice sweet spot where you can integrate with uh, um, the, the big, big data clusters that we have. Um, we have actually three or four different types in the bank. Um, we also have data warehousing, um, which enables us to uh, store and manage the data. Um, uh, but in the middle layer, we also have an enterprise uh, data integration service. So this is traditional IT, ETL, uh, currently runs off Informatica, about a third of the bank's data runs through that. So, you know, it's a, it's a stage where once you've built out your model, if you've got a process that's, that's critical to the running of the organization, you can then move it into that kind of facility. And a, and a data quality, because data quality is very important. Because so, if you've got junk data in, you're going to get junk answers out. 
So how do you build a center of excellence, a platform service, to, you know, to, to help all these users get the most out of their, uh, their predictive models or their analytics? We have to manage the infrastructure. You know? uh, we fundamentally sit in group technology. We, we have actually three production instances of DataEQ, uh, one for each of our network zones, and we have strict rules around, particularly Switzerland, around what data can be seen in and out of the country. So we have to have multiple instances, and not just multiple instances of production, we have engineering, UAT, disaster recovery instances as well. So you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of infrastructure to maintain and, and, and keep, keep active, keep the platform going. Disaster recovery and making sure you have plans around it, this is critical. I mean, it's, we're, we're a regulated organization. If we don't have these in place, then you know, the, we, we, we get um, operational risks put against us, which are then reported to the regulators. So it's not serious. So we've got to have you know, plans and tests and, and all in place so you can make sure that we have as little outage as possible. Even though technically it's not a business critical, it wouldn't know, the bank's not going to fall over if data queue's not running for a day or two, um, but it, we still have to have it in place. Uh, we have to make sure that we can integrate with all the authentication and other systems that we have in the bank. So, um, particularly in places like Switzerland, we have two-factor authentication. It means that anybody wanting to log on to any of our systems has to have you know, a smart card as well as a, a PIN that allows them to get in. So, it's a, it, it, that, that's not a straightforward integration, um, and, and particularly if it's been um, you know, a bank derived product, which is sometimes some of ours are. Uh, operational stability is another important uh, factor in terms of making sure that you've got all the uh, coordination of the, the, the servers, the, the connections sorted, the configuration sorted, all the users, accounts, projects uh, managed, so it's administration. We also like to try and keep to the latest versions. We're not on, quite, not on version five, but we are planning to go to version five in January, so we, we want to keep the latest um, version of the, the product. Incident management, this is another important thing you've got to manage. We have a ServiceNow ticketing system that allows us to manage and, and maintain uh, incidents as they come in to, to my team to then um, fix and uh, resolve. And then we make sure that we up keeping abreast of all the policies, and as you imagine, if, it's, if any of you work in financial organizations, the, the regulated policies that you've got to keep a, abreast of and affirm to are, well, probably longer than you can list. Uh, so we have to keep abreast of all of that. But it's, there's, there's more to it than just managing the infrastructure. We've got to help, help the users. So we, we get involved with the users, we provide best practice, um, we, we get involved in things like this and make sure that we're abreast of what the, the trends are in the industry um, because ultimately that's how we drive new lines of interest, new data science um, projects. We also maintain a, a very strong uh, social network internally um, we have our own internal social media page, um, instant messaging channels. Uh, we use a Jive system for our social media page. It's, it's one of the uh, fastest growing um, internal social media pages that we have. Uh, we, we put on lots of comment, uh, connect, uh, con but lots of uh, kind of blogs and interests there, lots of events, that sort of thing. We, we really work on making sure that that's a really active and alive part of the bank. Um, license management is very important. We need to make sure that my, my, my service isn't funded centrally. I have to, you have to go out and anybody using my service has to um, provide funding to it. So it's quite a difficult process. The bank's not really... Um, geared up as, a, as an, an enterprise service for this. We, we go and fund it from all our customers internally. So um, license management on the back of that is therefore a challenge, um, but um, something that we, we have to maintain. Uh, and we also provide a lot of training and doctor sessions so that users on uh, can actually book in a session with one of my team and 
they will walk through their workflows, they'll walk through their um, projects, their use cases, their business cases to to make sure that they're, you know, getting the best they can out of the out of the tool. Also, have to manage the vendor, which <laughs> um, is uh, has been, I am to be, um, has been some somewhat of a challenge, uh, given the banks, it's actually not, not the vendor's problem, um, it's more of the bank internal processes that we've had, um, particularly around uh, uh, what, the, what a regulated company expects um, a vendor to provide. When, and when you're talking about what is relatively a small software vendor, that can be a challenge for them. Uh, and we also are expected to understand the, the consultant market in, in this space. Um, we get quite a lot of queries about uh, consultancies that can come and help us, particularly my projects that, you know, the, the, you know they tend to not know, um, and so they come to us and ask us if we can help um, facilitate that kind of uh, additional resource or additional help within the, within the projects. Okay? So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I could go on for quite a long time, but I'm not going to. Um, but I think the biggest thing is around passion. Um, we, are, uh, we are passionate about what we do in my team. We, we don't just do this as a job. It's, we see this as something wider than just a job. Um, people in my team generally get involved in events, external events, and help run you know, uh, meetups and things like that. So this is where we want to really um, show uh, and it's that passion, it's that enthusiasm, enthusiasm that is infectious, and that's what really drives a great, uh, great service. Okay, so got some time for some questions. So you're talking about whether the, the users know, understand their own data. Yeah, that's a, that, is a, that is a challenge, I think, across the, the market, um, across the board. Um, we, um, we do use architects quite a lot, so particularly technology architects, um, uh, and we interact with those and we'll get them to help kind of educate the, the, the users or the, 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 the data analysts on, on how the, um, the structure of their data is. So that's how we get around it. It's not ideal, though. I think it's a, it's a, it's a general problem. Um, but this is the kind of point I was making about data literacy right at the beginning and that how important the subject matter experts are um, and, and identifying those in particular areas is, is the key. Well, um, kind of uh, qual uh, qualifications is, is they're citizen data scientists, so actually qualifications aren't actually required. Um, one thing that we're keen on is that they participate in uh, the trainings that we provide, and they also take show that they you know actually know how to use the use the tool. Right? So um, we we don't insist on anything like that, though. And, and I can't. I provide a service, so if anybody wants to use my service, they can. We've just got to find the funding. Oh, I see. In terms, of, yeah. So, in terms of that best practice and those doctor sessions, absolutely, we will review what they're doing. But um, we, one of the focuses is on on the performance on the on the infrastructure, um, but ultimately the outcome. Uh, we also have worked with a number of teams to build out what we call a um, an SDLC, like a productionization process, um, so that there's a QA 
element as part of that. So when they do go into production or scheduling and it's automated, they're, they're actually delivering something that's, that, is, that is meaningful. Yeah. Now the QA, so the way we do is we set out a model, like a template for them to use, and it's usually the way that we're seeing it being implemented is by the IT teams for the business area. understand well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we just want to understand um, how many people are becoming you know citizen data scientists how do you see the reception from um, other teams uh, throughout your corporation and how is that yeah so so yeah so we have just under a hundred uh, users data IQ just at the minute and we only started in August so so our adoption has been ridiculously high um, and um, uh, we are expecting that to go, keep continue growing at that, that pace right through the next couple of years. So, um, yeah, we, we have quite a significant growth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, I was just wondering, so someone comes to you and says, I would love to start a data science project, and you say, great, we have this tool for you, but before you start, go take this course or read this book or... Do you have that kind of advice for really, really beginners? Yeah, so we, I mean, the, the, we, we have the really basic introductions and we have a, a proof of concept environment so that they can um, play around with the tool, get, get, uh, get to understand it as well when they're doing the training. And then before we actually ask for them any money to fund it, we then move them, you know, and move them to a production instance. They, they've had for play with the tool, they've had basic training, basic introductions. There's a lot of information on the DataEQ website, for example, about what you should or shouldn't do. It's a, it's a really good resource, actually. There's tuition, tutorials on there as well. So, you know, that start right from beginner right away through. So those, those are uh, important resources um, and something that we are keen that the, uh, the users uh, take on. But they can do it in stages. They don't have to do it all up front. Yeah, we're, it's, it is an interesting concept. So, um, uh, so fundamentally, we keep tabs on a number of different key kind of user stats. You know, we want to make make sure that we're, you know, how how often the users are actually using, what, how often they set up schedules, what workflows, how complicated they are, you know, those sort of things. But we also use that social media and interactions on that social media. One thing I'm keen to do, I haven't set it up yet, but one thing I would like to do is set up champions within the organization um, so that the real super users of the tool um, can then be part of a, a kind of uh, a, a, a extension of my team to provide some of that additional support and help to other others and also play a key role um, for, for me and my service in providing input on how we um, where we ha where we take the service and how we improve it, but I think you know if we can get enough of those types of users, then that's a key indicator for us as well. So you mean dollar value? Yeah, well, this is a tricky one because it's a very diverse organisation, and therefore the value may not be in a in a something that's measurable in one area compared to what's measurable in a different one. Um, one of the other metrics or uh, things that we like to see is um, endorsements from senior management within those areas. So if I can get um, uh, kind of recommendations um, from the very senior managers in the organization about you know, how my services has helped their teams you know, get insight, um, save money, make money, whatever it happens to be, um, you know, the more of those we can get, the, the better, right, in terms of indicating the success of the, the service. Oh. Yeah, so it, it's, it's a 
bit of a mixed bag, actually. Some people were very clear about what they want to do. So we have project, you know, data science projects already set up, and they, you know, they're maybe not quite sure what the technology they want to do, but they know what they want to do, um, and, and they're quite savvy. And you know, data scientists in general have big egos, and so they think what well, the way that they've always done it is the best way of doing it, or you know, if particularly if they're you know coding in Python or R, right? Um, uh, so convincing them to share, and one of the great things about DataEQ is it allows you to collaborate across different members of the team, you know, is, is a challenge. Um, then we have the basic, uh, you know, spreadsheet users, you know, and that's a completely different end of the spectrum. You know, they're currently doing, you know, a lot of manual work with spreadsheets and, um, you know, desktop databases and trying to uh, trying to automate that or do be more efficient is a, you know, so it's a spectrum between the two and we get um, um, it, yeah, it's, a, it's a challenge to get across okay I'm out of time actually we're one minute over so I'm, <laughs> I'll have to call it a close yeah. there all right thank you very much this concludes the <laughs>